Hello everyone and welcome back to Season 6 of the New York Jets franchise and our first visit to the new SoFi Stadium, home of the Los Angeles Chargers and Rams. After a four-game losing streak, the Jets took it to the Broncos last week and in a Sunday night game outlasted Denver 51-31. The key for the Jets, keep the winning train a-rolling. For the 4-8 Chargers, the defense is missing one Joey Bosa. Injured and out for the rest of the season, he's been a big part of their defense and we'll have to wait to see how it's impacted now that he's gone. Along with that, trying to rebuild at the quarterback position has been problematic at best. Randall Wyatt, out of K-State, is having a tough season and the Jets' defense isn't looking to make it any easier. He does have superstar Melvin Gordon to hand it off to as well, but wide receiver Keenan Allen if he can get him the ball <laughs> is an asset that's for sure if Wyatt can be pressured it might make all the difference in the world for this game can New York take a win out of Los Angeles to find out let's watch as the Jets collide with the Chargers here on the Football Freaks Sports Network Taewon Taylor is back deep and Daniel Carlson gets us underway here in SoFi Stadium. Taylor takes a knee and that brings the ball out to the 25 where the Chargers will start their business. There's the numbers on Randall Wyatt. Five interceptions, 324 attempts. So that seems to be good. It's just it would be nice to see a few more touchdowns in there. And the opening play, Melvin goes down in the backfield. Lawrence gets to him back at the 23. Gordon alone set back. He gets it on the counter play, and he can't get out of the backfield yet again. Wyatt now in the shotgun. The Jets with a single high look, and the throw is deep and caught. Brian Poole tried to make the interception, but a 24-yard strike to Mike Williams. And here is the Chargers offensive attack. Melvin Gordon is the center of that running game, and they're going to depend on him a lot today, I have a feeling. Second and seven. Madison can't get anywhere. Third and seven now. The throw goes out, complete to Taylor to the 40, uh, well, the 39 of the Jets. And a first down for the Chargers. Play action pass, and it's incomplete, knocked away by Ramirez. Third and 10. Wyatt back to pass, throws, and that one bounces off Cashman's arm, and that's. All for the Chargers' first drive. The Jets come on the field. Sam Darnold with 12 interceptions, 285 attempts, and oh, just over 2,600 yards. Trying to improve on that today. The first play is a pass complete to Chris Herndon that nets a five-yard gain. Now the Pitch out to Jackson, and he can't get anywhere either. The running game for each team is not exactly starting out with a flare. Denzel Perryman in the middle of that defense for the Chargers. They are hoping for a big game out of him. Third and five. The pass is complete no it's knocked away by Adderley jo Jordan Thomas trying to make the catch has it knocked out of his hands at the last moment now the Chargers start at their own 35 the ball goes to Gordon he spins his way first down up to the 45 yard line two DBs back for the Jets Gordon 
Takes it onto the leg, give and has the first down into Jets territory at the 42. Now second and nine. The pass goes to Hunter Henry, complete at the 29, and another first down for the Chargers. Madison can't get out of the backfield. Second and 10, out of the I formation. Oh my goodness, a hole was opened up for Gordon and he didn't stop until he got to the 19. Madison up the middle of the field, gets the first down to the 13. Now second and six from the nine. Madison takes it and he's in the end zone. Touchdown Chargers. So with that nine yard scamper, Alexander Madison puts the first points on the board in this football game. Putting the Chargers up seven to nothing. Now can the Jets answer back from the 25 yard line. Jackson alone in the backfield takes the delay give and gets all the way out to the 35 for a first down. Jackson alone in the backfield, motion, and a counter play. Jackson breaks through the line, 30, 20, 10, nobody's gonna catch him. Touchdown, Jets. A 65 yard touchdown run. It takes the Jets all of two plays to answer back and the game is tied 7-7. Brings us to the end of quarter number one. White out of the shotgun. Third and eight. Pass is complete to Henry out to the 38 yard line. First down, Chargers. The Jets in a single high look this time. Gordon is taken down in the backfield. Lorenzo Carter breaking through the line and getting them for a four yard loss. On third down, the pass over the middle, complete. A 31 yard strike to Keenan Allen and a first down. From the 33 now, the pass is complete to Allen again, but there is a flag on the play. That one's coming back. And the Chargers are going to be minus 10 yards. Deion Dawkins guilty of the hold. Third and 18 now. Pass complete on the crossing pattern to Mike Williams. Doesn't get the first down, but he gets to the 27. And from there, McClellan puts it through. And we have the Chargers in the lead yet again. 10 to seven. Darnold out of the pistol from the 21. Throws across the middle, complete. Carl Arsenault out to the 34 and a first down. Third and nine. The pass over the middle to McLaurin and he gets another first down for the Jets. And second and 10. Darnold goes down. Uchenna and Wosu gets him back at the 36. That brings up third and 19. Back to pass. The throw to Carl Arsenault is short. And they're going to have to punt. Vedvik. Kills the ball at the five yard line. So the Chargers will start out in a hole. Gordon in the backfield, takes it up the middle, breaks through the line, first down out to the 16. That takes us to the two minute warning with your score 10 7, Chargers. Out of the shotgun. Wyatt throws complete. Henry. And that's a short pickup, but Dexter Lawrence is down now. And that can't be good for the Jets. Now third and five. They see Lawrence there being escorted to the back. Ooh, that is 
just ugly. Wyatt throws over the middle, complete. Allen out to the 37 yard line. First down for the Chargers and they keep the drive going. Another pass and this one is intercepted. Going back the other way, Brian Poole, touchdown Jets. Melvin Gordon tried to catch up with him but just didn't have the right angle. And Brian Poole puts him up 14 to 10 before the break. And now the question will be is whether or not the Chargers can put some points on the board before the break. And this one is complete out to Gordon to the 26 yard line. Only a one yard gain, but Mike Williams makes it a first down out to the 43. Pass over the middle, complete. Williams for a six yard gain. Now from the 48, the pass this time complete. Taylor takes it down to the 40. Back to pass, Wyatt throws and that one should have been picked off by Jamal Adams and he's gonna wish he had that back. McClellan from 56 just misses to the right. And the score remains 14 to 10. And that takes us all the way to halftime. Let's now take it back to the studio and a halftime report from Eurocat Baby. Reporting on a couple of key injuries for the Jets, Trey Hendrickson, who went out earlier in the second quarter, has suffered a dislocated shoulder. And now, Dexter Lawrence has gone out with a dislocated elbow. Neither one will be returning today, and taking over for Hendrickson will be the Jets' hidden development rookie, Kate Hoffman. He's been showing a lot of promise lately, so some playtime will really help and taking Lawrence's spot will be third-year defensive tackle Harvey Gabriel. In addition to personnel issues, the Jets have to keep in mind that earlier today, the Bills shut out the Dolphins in Miami and not by a small margin. That just increases the need for a win here this afternoon. Thanks for that update and with major losses to their defensive line, we'll see if the backups can do any better against this better than average Charger O-line. It would seem there's a big difference in the preparation for this game than the Denver game last week. The Jets hold a very slim four point lead over the Chargers, but only have been able to generate just over 100 yards of offense so far. With only 30 yards passing the ball, will there be some changes made in the New York locker room? Stay with us to find out because we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back everyone to SoFi Stadium in our clash of the Jets and Chargers. Los Angeles has a four point deficit here at the break and yet they have double the offensive production than do the Jets. And can New York somehow find a way to slow down this Charger offense? Or will they be able to make the scoreboard coincide with the offensive production? Let's find out as the second half unfolds. Starting at their own 16. Jackson in the backfield. He gets the handoff and he struggles out to the 21. Doing a lot of juking and spinning in the middle of the field. Second and five. The pass complete to Ross for the first down out to the 36. And ironically, that is his first reception of the day. Darnold back to pass again, throws deep, short and intercepted. He was trying to go long to Ross, but just didn't have enough air under it. And Taron Johnson makes the grab before the ball ever gets to Ross. That gives the Chargers the ball at their own 38-yard line. And Gordon in the backfield. Takes the ball on the delay give, and it takes it out to the 48-yard line. Third and one. 
Out of the I formation, Gordon takes it up the middle and gets just enough to move the sticks. At midfield now, they give it to Gordon again. Has yardage into jet territory to the 42. Madison on the carry, gets the first down. Just enough to move the sticks again. And Leonard Williams is down being looked at on the sideline and at least that's better than being escorted to the locker room. White throws complete to Keenan Allen at the 27 yard line. Now the handoff to Gordon and he is taken down in the backfield. Blake Cashman gets to him. His 60th tackle on the season. Third and 10. Back to pass again. White connects with Madison. And he doesn't get the first down. Cashman there on the stop. McClellan now kicks from 40 yards. And it's good. 14-13. The Jets still have the lead. But after a Jet three and out. Chargers have it again. That is complete. Out to Williams. Second and two. Gordon does a little juke move and makes the first down out to the 34. Gordon staying in there. He gets the ball again up the middle and he's out to the 39 yard line and that takes us to the end of the third quarter with your score 14-13 Jets. Pass over the middle is incomplete, intended for Williams. That will bring up fourth down, and the Jets get the ball back. From the 30-yard line, Darnold dances around in the pocket, and uh, wait a minute, did you see that? There was pass interference, and it didn't get called. The pass this time goes to Herndon, and a leaping catch at the 49 and a first down for the Jets. Uh, third and seven, Darnold drops back, throws, and it's caught. Carl Arsenault down to the 26 yard line. Dawson Knox now in motion to throw over the middle, complete to Ross, and that's a nine yard pickup. So Jackson gets it and takes it the rest of the way to the 16 for the first down. Now on the play action pass, Darnold out to backs all the way to the 30 and he completes it. Jordan Thomas makes the grab at the five yard line. First and goal and Darnold goes down. Sacked again by Nwosu. It is now third and goal from the 12. Darnold back to pass, throws, and it's complete in the end zone, Carl Arsenault. Darnold without pressure just waited for Arsenault to get open, and he scores a touchdown which gives the Jets an eight point lead, 21 to 13. So the Chargers need to score a touchdown and two point conversion and that one is complete out to the 42 yard line to Taylor. Wyatt back to pass again, has his man. Taylor makes the grab at the 48. Second and three, the pass to Melvin Gordon. On the underneath route, has the first down to the 43. Wide back pedaling throws to Gordon and he's caught in the backfield. Harvey Gabriel on his third tackle of the game since coming in and relief of Lawrence makes the play and that one's batted down by Robert Ramirez. I'm a little surprised but the Chargers punted that one away Darnold running around in the backfield, finally lets it fly, completes it, but it's a short pickup, only a yard. And there we go, a run play, Josh Jacobs 
takes it out to the 29. And third and one is, and the call is up the middle to Trayvon Wesco. First down, Jets. Now from the 37, the draw play. Jackson reverses the field, gets all the way out to the 43, and that takes us to the two minute warning. Now if the Chargers can get this ball back, they could tie up the football game. But Jacobs gets the first down into Charger territory at the 48, and that might do it right there, folks. And the Jets in the victory formation, and that indeed is all she wrote. The Jets win in SoFi Stadium 21-13. to It seems as though there was a shift in momentum during this half versus the first today. If you look at that pass versus rush yards, the production for the Jets, they ended the game with a pretty balanced offensive yard look. Little would one know that it was a completely different ball game. The defense took on a completely different persona here in the second half, only allowing the Chargers 85 yards of offense. Not sure, but the Jets seem to be back to their second half performance status as far as the defense is concerned anyway. For having just a so-so season thus far, Wyatt had a pretty nice day, I thought. Although 68% was not stellar by any means, it was better than Darnold could manage today. I'm just a little concerned that Darnold plays with a lack of consistency that could make him one of the best quarterbacks that the game has seen. But now he's 26 and is in his sixth season in the league. And if his stats would compare to the salary that the Jets paid to keep him in New York, I wouldn't say anything. But like I said, I would have thought he would be better by now. You can just see that the receivers suffer a little too. You can see that in the numbers they put up. Defensively, you can tell that they had a good day from the stats. There was only one charger on the first page of the stat sheet with Ramirez coming on pretty strong. Both Cashman and Polite had brilliant performances in the backfield today. I would say that the move back to the outside of the linebacking crew has really worked in Cashman's favor. With just three weeks to go in the regular season, the Jets sit at eight and five and are in the hunt for the wild card spot. Of those three games, the Bills have two top five teams to contend with and play the number one seeded Eagles in Philly. Remember that if the Jets can tie the record of Buffalo at the end of the season, New York will win the division by virtue of winning both of their regular season games with them. But it also means that the Jets will need to win the rest of their games. If they lose just one, they'll not be in control of their own destiny for the playoffs. On tap for New York will be welcoming the Las Vegas Raiders to MetLife Stadium. The 2 and 11 Raiders are now playing for last place in the AFC. And if they aren't careful, they could earn the title of worst in the NFL and get the first draft pick. Now that wouldn't be the worst thing, as far as I can tell anyway, since uh, they look like they need help in a lot of areas. Derek Carr is still their quarterback, so they at least were able to hang on to him through free agency. At 32 and losing overall points pretty fast, I wouldn't be surprised to see Vegas take a quarterback this season in the draft. I'm just not sure who they would take since the quarterback pool isn't very strong this season. The key for the Jets is not overlooking this team or they could stay in the hunt for the wild card spot for the rest of the season. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks 
Sports Network. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and remember to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of new videos as they come out. The Jets defense was the hero today. A pick six by Brian Poole, plenty of tackles in the backfield. They supplemented the average play of the offensive effort. This next game against the Raiders has big postseason implications for the Jets. And as long as they prepare well and don't overlook them, they should be in a good position going into week 16. Any way you slice it, the offense should be able to put up some decent numbers with the Raiders giving up an average 30 points per game. To find out if the Jets can take advantage of the Raiders, be with us back in MetLife Stadium. And until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.